Uh, okay. Uh, apparently we're still building, though. It's not great. Oh, right. Um, yeah, because I, I updated request in common API lib, and so that kind of like cascaded through everything, I guess. Super. Okay, well, let me pull up the uh, Docker desktop as well. Things are a little slow at the moment, feels like. None of the containers have been uh, restarted yet, but that's going to happen. I was kind of hoping that this would all finish before uh, <laughs> the break was over, but oh well. Cargo Chef Cook release. Speed path. Okay, well, um, let's see here. I guess what I can do, uh, recently I've been using Thunder Client for making uh, requests. So let's, uh, let's set up some requests here. So uh, let's see, what am I going to call it? YouTube. Start uh, upload task. These aren't going to work quite yet because the service needs to be updated, but uh, at least they can define them. Just hide that for now. Uh, let's see. So this is like slash YouTube, whatever. Because of the way the uh, Nginx proxy in front of everything is set up. YouTube. Load. And then we're going to have some uh, JSON with eventually with some stuff in it. <laughs> Not worry about that quite yet. And I'll make another request. And this is going to be YouTube. Um, to Upload task, park task, there we go. And so this is also gonna be a post to slash YouTube slash upload task with uh, some JSON content. Now what should this look like? Uh, let's see, so Oh, right, 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 right. So what does... What should the actual body being posted to upload task look like? Well, it should look like the payload, uh, essentially, th this bit in here. Uh, which is most everything from this hmm. things I don't I don't care about right now it's all this authentication stuff that's here that we'll worry about later um, hmm. right, so upload video handler is the actual like back-end task that the task API the task worker will call to actually do the upload 
And the body here, like we could just leave it as 30 JSON value, and then it would be our responsibility in the function to pluck out the values from body. Hmm. Or uh, I, I could, uh, instead of using certain JSON value here, I could use the YouTube upload struct and it will automatically deserialize the JSON into that struct. And that's what we would have here instead of a value. Uh, the issue is the struct right now includes this task title. I could do a couple of things. I could make two structs. I could have one that's YouTube upload and another one that is YouTube uh, upload request, something like that. And then, so this one would take the request and then embedded inside of the payload would be the, uh, the actual upload details. Um, like, like what we're, what we're doing here, right? Where we tell it, yeah, we're parsing JSON, but it's actually, it can be deserialized into a YouTube upload struct. And so then body here is essentially an instance of the, of the struct. Um, we can't just use this as is because it has this field and it's not optional. So it's going to throw a deserialization error if we try to use this and the other, uh, the other handler. Let me hide all this. This is the part that we care about. So let's do this. I think I'm gonna rename this to um, request. And then I'm gonna copy this bit. I'm just gonna make a thing down here. This is, this is gonna be YouTube upload uh, payload, task payload. Yeah, there you go. Actually, 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 let's put these both side by side. And what we're gonna do is we're going to leverage this to enforce the structure of the payload that's going into here. Yeah, it doesn't like that because that's not proper syntax. We, could, we, can, we can make it look like JSON here because of the macro. Does this work? I think this works, right? If we just pass the struct into the JSON macro. Oops. I'm gonna find out. Um, just out of date. Okay, there we go. There. Now we encode our saying. The data that we're preparing to go into the payload is a YouTube task, a YouTube upload task payload. And so then that matches up with saying that the body that we get down here is also a YouTube upload task payload. But is it though? So if we look at um, how all of this works, <laughs> let's close a couple tabs I don't need here and then scroll. So um, just like we have an upload and then like an upload task endpoint in the new service, we have detect and detect segment. So detect segment takes, um, oh, here we go, detect segment input. What does that look like? So it takes all the payload fields, but there's also a cursor. Uh, 
Um, however, in the case of our YouTube upload API, we don't care about the cursor. Um, I should, let's, let's copy the, the struct though. This is gonna represent our output from this method. You can call it uh, upload video task output. Can we do this? Is this is this the thing that we can do? <laughs> uh, and then we said our our data key was summary, right? Which should be a vec of um, I don't know. I don't know what it's a vec of. String, sting, string. No, it doesn't like that. Expect the type found variant. It's not a type. Uh, let's see. What did we want to do here? Uh, option, right? Option. Can we do? Can we do option void? Is void not a thing? We can't say placeholder. No, okay. Um, what happens if this returns something that doesn't have the cursor field in it? Does that break the task uh, worker? I think there's already probably a bug that I've introduced in the task worker since the work that I did on it the other day. But let's take a look. So how do we pull out the cursor? So we do check to see if cursor is null. Specifically null, so like none. Yeah. Returns true if the value is a null. For any value which uh, on which is null returns true, as null is guaranteed to return some, oh yeah, units. Yeah, hold on. So what we can do, here you go. Option, optionally, and in, oh, like the, the unit type, right? So just like a, a, a tuple or tuple, depending how you like how you like to say it, that has no elements. We do the same thing for summary, but Maybe we'll pass the string back. Um, and then what we're gonna do here, yeah, there we go. That's gonna, we're going to um, Is there, is there a way to parameterize in, well, no, because into, into response is a trait that says that we can be, it, the thing that we return can be turned into a response, essentially. That allows us to return like a bunch of different things. Um, like this shape of response or other shapes that are all, all implement, have implementations of, of into response. Which means if like we're handling an error, we can return just like a status code or um, if we want to return a status code in body, uh, in some places, but also include headers and other places within the implementation of this function, they all, all the shapes uh, of things implement this trait, uh, assuming we use the right shapes. Okay, so, hey look, all the things <laughs> finished just in time for me to Docker Compose up again to rebuild the stuff that just changed which should be a lot faster now since we're not having to rebuild uh, everything. Uh, in the meantime, we can probably hit the start upload task. 
There we go. And so now we're getting some errors because we've told it the upload endpoint. So this is the endpoint that the front end calls. Um, it, it's going to automatically do, uh, it's, it's gonna to try to deserialize the request body and it's gonna look for the things that we declared in the struct, right? So we can just like iteratively, oh, how about a title? Uh, test video one. How about a description? I already know that we need that. Just empty though. So if I send this, there's no tags. Okay, well, we can send tags. We can just send an empty set of tags. Hey, Brainless. Good day to you. How is it going? Um, I don't know. Ooh, a raid. Mod Prog just raided with Mod nine Prague. viewers. Thank you for the raid. How is it going? Welcome in. Welcome in. Hello, Marksy. How was your nap? Ah, uh, what does Frosty Tool say about Mod um, Mod Prog? I already knew he was uh, doing software and game development as I was checking out his stream earlier. If you're looking for a streamer who's all about that tech life, Mod Prog is your go-to geek. From diving into Rust projects like a hardware volume mixer, yeah, it's all that. Cheeky streams about why Rust isn't always a thrill. Uh, feel that. Uh, they're the master of all things Linux and terminal related. Uh, don't let the boring titles fool you. There's always something exciting in store for those who love to code and tinker. Nice. Have to go eat some dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, it's it's one of those things that I feel like if, if you're doing a raid, it's because, well, obviously you're you're stopping your stream. There's a reason for that. So I think that makes total sense. I hope you have a good dinner. Brainless says, doing all right, fighting with the static type analyzing tool of Elixir, which is saying there is a function which won't ever get executed. If I see it working fine, well, no idea. <laughs> you, you have seen pretty much all of my time learning Elixir on stream uh, a few streams ago. Where is Frosty getting that description from? I think what it's doing, in a, um, Legendary Marvin, is that it is looking at like stream titles. Let me turn the music down a little bit, a little loud in my ear. Um, it's looking at like stream titles, and um, I guess that's it. I think it's like it's. It must be using like GPT or some AI uh, LLM to to like generate that. Yeah, it, it, it's quite fancy. It mostly works. I had one thing uh, the other day where I was generating a raid message for, for a raid, and it um, it was a little bit off, but it's, it's pretty good. Like I have a command that I can say, oh, I'm about to raid so-and-so, and it will generate a raid message for people to copy and paste <laughs> that like describes, uh, what we were doing on this stream and what the new stream is about and all that it is it is fancy brainless says the issue is that i'm uh trying to push dialyzer into our pipeline but that will break the check okay i think dialyzer is some kind of static analysis or linting or something for elixir maybe guessing <laughs> All right, what are we doing? We are we are trying to, so we don't, we've not, we've basically done all the groundwork to make it so that we can integrate uploading videos to YouTube inside of Glowing Telegram, this project. Uh, and what I'm doing right now is kind of iteratively working through the errors so that we can have a proper upload, yeah, static analysis, yep, um, uh, payload to test this out. Uh, so what I should do now is figure out what the, um, what the, uh, ID should be for the category. Maybe it's 22. 
Uh, it says somewhere here, yeah, here you go. It can be retrieved using this API. Uh huh. Okay, can we can we just try it? Part. Set the parameter value to snippet. You don't need to see all my accounts. <laughs> uh, let's pretend to be sleeping gods. Continue. Yeah, allow. <laughs> 400. No filters selected. Uh, expected one of region code or ID. Uh, well, I don't know the IDs. Region code, uh, I guess it would be just US. Because it's, uh, it's ISO uh, 3166-1 alpha two country code, so that would be like US. So execute that, there we go. So then, gaming category is 20, thank you, Mark C. <laughs> I'm about to find that out, I think. Let's see if you're right. It is gaming. Uh, let, let's pretend that we are uploading a gaming video. I was saying earlier that I don't know, um, I think long-term what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna have multiple um, video, uh, YouTube channels. I, I mean, I do have multiple YouTube channels, but I'm not really uploading anything to most of them, just to save in VODs. But I'm probably gonna have like a save in coding and a save in gaming um, YouTube channels for like edited content for those categories. Um, because, because what's fun is that I can see I can see like people subscribe to like a coding video and then they'll they'll like see like uh, a, a, like a gaming video and then they'll unsubscribe. <laughs> so I can see that happening. Uh, all right, so invalid type, integer, it expected a string. Um, I don't know if that's a problem. So if we go back to the other API, how are we sending? I guess it's supposed to be an integer. So let's make it an integer. Uh, so category should be, um, I don't know, um, maybe just like a, a unsigned eight. How, how big does the number go? <laughs> 44, okay. I'm sure this will not be a problem in the in the future. Let's rebuild. Uh, and while we're waiting for that to happen, let's let's just keep on. I'll, I'll I'll work around it temporarily by sending a string. There we go. And then it needs a render URI. So the render URI is this just kind of eternal identifier of where the uh, <laughs> of where the uh, the rendered video file lives. URI, so this will be something like um, file local uh, one, two, three, something like that. Uh, have I thought about how you can use AI to generate some tags for the videos, potentially the category? Uh, yeah, yeah, I not specifically tags, although we could do that. Um, one of the things I think, so in the GitHub project, Boop, 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 boop. There we go. Uh, in the GitHub project for glowing telegram, there's this tab called projects. Uh, and this is now public, the, um, the planning board for the project. So you can see what I got going on. <laughs> uh, a little slow. So this is stuff that, Hey, this is what we're working on right now. Um, being able to upload apps to YouTube. And then uh, past stream, we worked on the Twitch chatbot. And then this is something I've been doing off stream is working on um, some front end component stuff. Um, 
but I think somewhere in here. Yeah, add some reaction to episode model admin that uses OpenAI to generate. That is that is a weird title. Uh, but basically there's a couple things in here. The focus has been on like generating the descriptions. Um, help channel bot, swap out MUI, OTIO gen, thumbnails, um, YouTube scheduling, use AI to generate markers for episode and export. Um, uh, summary action. Yeah, so let's just add a thing explicitly that's like, use AI to generate tags for apps. There we go. And so um, there's this, and then the other thing that exists in uh, Glowing Telegram is, so there's issues and pull requests. So pull requests is like the stuff that I'm currently in progress on. And then issues, um, you could, like, I think right now anyone can open an issue against this repo. If like, if you see a bug or have an idea, um, and I can pull the issue onto the board, but I can also take an item from the board and create the issue from it. Um, uh, because you can't refer to these items in like the pull request, but that's how you like. Like once I merge this pull request, that'll close this issue, number 25. And this item is what's linked on, it's it's like, um, it's on the board. So this will automatically update on the board as being done once the pull request is merged. Uh, and that's, <laughs> it's, a, it's my fancy to-do list. Maybe a little overkill, but it might be good for later. All right, so if I send render URI, there we go. Okay, so now category is supposed to be a number. Send it. Uh, notify subscribers. So this should be uh, false, we'll say. And then we need task title. Um, test upload task. And the purpose of the task title is so that in the UI, like after we trigger the upload, that'll be like an asynchronous job in the background and our little task widget will show that title uh, here. So we can see what it was and what its status is. Uh, I'm still kind of working on this, but it exists now. All right, so if you send this, hey, 202 accepted. So what that did, when it splits the episode, does it have the ability to add intro, outro? Yeah, yeah, so the it's, it's pretty hard-coded right now and it needs some improvements, but what it does is like when we go into the episode, um, that stuff doesn't happen as part of splitting the episode. So let, let's go to a stream. Uh, all right, so we have a stream here. This will take a second to fully load. Uh, I do have something on the board to try to improve performance. No, 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 no worries. I think this is this is good context. And this, this kind of shows like how much progress has been ma made on this. So the main way I'm doing splitting the, the streams into episodes is based on audio. Um, so if we, all right, this one's busted. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's do one that I've actually uh, done the thing on. I think maybe this one. or I'll go back to uh, an older one that I know it definitely works. All right, reset view. There we go. So I triggered this, this job to detect silences. And so what I can do is I can select the periods of silence that break up the stream into episodes. And then I can click start vault create episodes. And what it will do is it will create three episode records tied to the stream that select this period of time for one episode, this period of time for the second, and the remaining time for the third, right? 
so then I can go into episodes and we can see here's episode one of day 11 of Power World of Subs. And so we have this, although this should really be like five. I have a bug right now where it's, uh, if you select the first segment, it creates an additional empty episode. And if you don't select the first segment, then it includes that silent five minutes where the stream is starting. So there, yeah. So you have this and there's not a media file yet because it hasn't been rendered. But what you can do is you can go over here to export OTIO. So that's an open, open timeline um, format. It's basically like a, a, a JSON file. Yeah, so your stream would need a period of silence. And it does, because I take a break every hour uh, while ads are running and the mic is muted. So there's always gonna be like several minutes of silence because an aspect of how I'm doing the recording is I have separate audio tracks in the local recording for my microphone, for game or desktop sounds, for the uh, audio track, like the music. All of those are in separate tracks. So the silence detection can focus on a specific track and detect silence just on the microphone track. Um, so when I export OTIO, that generates a timeline that can be imported into DaVinci Resolve, which is what I'm using for video editing. Um, and it automatically picks the media files on my local drive for this period of time, because there's like one for every 20 minute, um, portion of the stream is a separate video file. So it picks them all. It um, cuts the any that it needs to, to fit to fit this, you know, start and stop start and stop time. And then it um, it adds a intro transition, like a video transition effect. It adds uh, placeholders for where my overlays will go since you can't have it apply DaVinci Resolve Fusion effects from the OTIO file. So it just has little placeholders. And then it adds the outro video to the end. Although right now it's it's kind of at an arbitrary place. It doesn't fit it right. So that's a bug. Um, then you just have to click a couple of things <laughs> in Resolve to like generate a render. And then you come back here and you click Browse and then you can select one of the media files that's in the render folder. So this is reading from local drive uh, on the server, which is also my local computer, uh, for what files are in the render folder. And you can select that and that will tie the rendered video back to the episode. And so then the goal is once you've done that for everything you wanna upload to YouTube, you click this and there's gonna be a button that says upload to YouTube. Then uh, everything gets unselected. And then what we'll see is tasks here for each uh, upload process. And we'll see when they're all done. None of them is gonna work right now. <laughs> this isn't gonna work right now because we've not implemented the, uh, the backend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's, it's coming along. Uh, I don't know if I showed this on stream. The other aspect of this is I have a thing that reaches out to the Twitch API and can pull all of my recent streams. So like here is the stream that is currently happening. <laughs> it's not, I'm, so I'm not gonna import it because it's not done. But so far, two hours and 39 minutes. Um, so this is how I'm populating the stream record now uh, over here. Uh, yeah, they would, they would need to do that. Or um, there are some other things that I have going on here. So um, I'm also doing uh, speech to text transcriptioning. What's this, once this loads, it's gonna load, I believe it. Uh, <laughs> and that was one of the things that I was thinking of doing here is having it um, maybe look at the transcript to figure out how to split. I've just not implemented like automated splitting based on that yet. Um, I also, yeah, I've not run the transcribe job for this, this video, this stream, but, um, how about one where I have? But one of the other things that I've been messing around with doing is being able to actually export 
subtitles based on the transcript into a subtitle file to import into DaVinci Resolve. Not so much to actually put subtitles on the video. Uh, it's it's so-so, but it's it's could be helpful for being able to quickly see what's going on in the video while you're trying to edit so you can find <laughs> things uh, once the UI responds. You can do it. You can do it. There you go. Okay. So, hello, it's time for some Power World. Apparently the world's oldest wood. I actually said this because this was a Frosty Tools um, uh, factoid. Yeah, exactly. And for descriptions. Um, yeah, so it has timestamps. So it, it knows, like, in this time window, this is what I said. And it's pretty good, especially giving it to GPT-4 and having it generate a summary. Uh, it's going to be able to ignore any kind of weird transcription issues, especially if you tell it it's like an automated transcript. And to, like, <laughs> to, to do better. Like... Uh, like this is weird. Some ever, can you see that X third here? <laughs> I wonder if there are any fish like pals. Yeah, that, that's actually a thing I probably said. What's a crimis? Yeah. So there we go, we got, we got all that. <laughs> do, do you lurking? <laughs> So the goal is to basically be able to like do all this data processing and ingestion and to not make it so that like right now I have to click into each thing and click the thing and wait for it and, and making it so that I can do a lot of processing all at once is kind of what I want to do. Uh, we can also see the list of video clips. This is part of what's slowing down the UI I think is all of these, these fields. Um, but like here is <laughs> a lot of info. <laughs> All right, so back to coding. So we did trigger the task. Actually, if I pull up Redis, uh, Redis Insight here, we can take a look at the actual task record and we can see that our payload made it into Redis. I just need to make sure not to open any of the keys that have like tokens in them. Uh, so like task counter here, 38. So we should be looking for task item 38 or 39, 38, okay. So here we go. So this is the, uh, the key that was created uh, in Redis to represent the task that we queued up by calling the YouTube upload endpoint. So we have data key summary. Here, let's, can we do this side by side some way? There we go. So we have, uh, oh, uh, so what if I, what if I do this? Okay, there we go. Data key summary. Um, that's not part of the, that's like hard coded in. ID 38, that's the ID of the task. Status processing, because it is, but not really because it's not implemented. Uh, URL is the, the URL for the task API, the task worker to call back to our microservice to actually do the upload, the title, and then the payload. And so here's the, the payload is what uh, is this, this part. So category 20, description, empty, notify subscribers, false. Uh, render URI is that thing, it's not a real thing. Tags is empty, thumbnail URI, I didn't specify, that's a thing I wanna do later. And then uh, title, test video one. So that's all in Redis. And then what I'm expecting, if I look at the Docker um, like output for task worker, is that we should be seeing some errors. There we go. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so we got the task data. So I got the task from the queue. Uh, that we have going on in Redis, and then I got a response. So we did implement just kind of like a placeholder endpoint. And so I returned a cursor and a summary. And then, um, oh, the logs are out of order. I see, 58, 
26, 58. Okay, that's weird. So I think, so because we returned a good response, yeah, it's panicking somewhere. <laughs> um, and the specifically the task, so all of the other services, um, I have been going through to make sure that we're not doing anything where we would cause a panic, but specifically for the task worker, it's designed so that if something unexpected happens, so I guess here on SRC main line 91, it will panic. The, the worker should just crash. Um, we can't do that for the APIs because if the API endpoint crashes, it doesn't result in the client getting a meaningful, I mean, it just like terminates the connection or maybe it gets a 500 or something, but it affects the whole service. If you panic inside of Axum uh, API endpoint, handler so for those we have to like check everything and make sure that we're not doing like dot expect on stuff but in the worker it's fine because the idea is going to be that like if you were to actually deploy this thing like if we were to like spin this up and properly manage it you would deploy a bunch of workers so you could do multiple processing jobs at the same time and you would have monitoring and recovery and you'd have like uh, some kind of um, stats on the workers and if they're crashing a bunch and alerting and all of those things that we don't have because this is just the thing that I'm devving. <laughs> all right, so uh, in task worker, so this is the issue. We are unwrapping, we're trying to, we're, we're expecting that the data that we're getting from somewhere from, wait, why are we? Okay, so this is a bug I introduced the other day. I We should be looking for ID, but we should be looking for it in data because data is what's coming back from calling the service. What we should be looking for is Uh, let's see, task data? Yeah, so that that's poor naming. <laughs> there's task data and then there's uh, data. So that's that's no good. Um, hash map, so yeah, we don't need to unwrap here. Okay, cool, so that'll fix the bug. But yeah, that's, that's, that's what's going on because otherwise like our, our endpoint that's supposed to actually be do, doing the uploading right now, it doesn't do anything. It just returns okay. <laughs> so it should be like complete and it's not complete because uh, of that panic. That's why we have two pending tasks right now because the worker is not able to actually mark them as uh, complete because it's crashing. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? We have like 15 minutes-ish left in the stream today. What I would like to do right now is make something happen in YouTube. Um, where, I don't know if we'll get as far as actually uploading the video, but I would like to at least create the, the placeholder where the video will be uploaded into. Um, this might even be the right URL. This looks right. The V3 YouTube videos endpoint. Um, that looks like the right body snippet and status and is what I want to do because I don't want to make a public video. <laughs> it wouldn't show up anyway if you haven't uploaded the content, but uh, we'll do that. So here's Copilot writing some stuff for us again. It might even be right. So that looks kind of okay. So we, we send authorization header with the bearer token, which we should already have. And then we check the, uh, check for an error. And if it's not a success, then we throw an error. 
see what Copilot does now. I think this is probably good enough to do. Uh, upload the contents of the video uh, using and uh, what is it? Chunk? Chunk to upload? Something like that. And then um, expected struct axiom HTTP. Ah, right. So the key thing here, in order, in order to have these different paths where we are returning different shaped responses, although they're not that different, they're all status code and then JSON, but they could be different. Um, we just do into response and in all the places and then it, and then it works. Okay. So this might actually, I don't know. I, I don't know if the token that I have from when I authed yesterday is going to work. There is a refresh token. It might actually like auto refresh the token. Uh, we're, we're going to find out. Uh, if not, I'll have to move this off screen so I can re-auth uh, through OAuth. And uh, we'll see if we can actually create uh, a video. Actually, it well, hmm. probably at this point, the task is done. Nope, not yet. That's interesting. I would have kind of expected that it would have marked the task as processed here. I wonder why it didn't. Let's look at task worker. Okay, starting task worker. I wonder if we have a, uh, a bug where so there, there's two elements to how the task worker works in Redis. So there's the task record itself, which is this task item and then a number. And then there's also a, um, a task queue. Although if it's empty, we don't see it. And I'm guessing that's what the situation is. Like the worker fails in such a way that we don't, so there's task queue temp and there's stuff in here. So theoretically the task worker should recover, but I don't think it is. So that's a bug, uh, but that's fine because we can just, we can queue up another task once, uh, once the build is done. Let me go back to the project and uh, Uh, oh yeah, it's the uh, Nginx is restarting. Give it a minute. Let's create a new uh, thing here to um, make sure task worker can recover from uh, crashing at any point. Um, pending items are still queued. Still having difficulty with RNS on this keyboard. Uh, pending items are still Q U E U E D. There we go. Let's uh, let's let's make sure that's near the top. Should work on that soon. <laughs> All right. We have a front and back. We do. Uh, we should still have pending tasks. Yeah, processing. They're gonna be processing forever. <laughs> Let's go back here and uh, let's let's go here to the upload uh, YouTube upload endpoint. So this is our against our local um, constellation of services. 
We'll trigger another one. I didn't update the title, but oh well. So now, yeah, there's three. And it's complete, apparently. Number 39. We did it. So, uh, give me a minute here. Let me, uh, let me go over to YouTube and uh, we'll see if we actually did a thing. It says it's complete, so that should imply that it was able to successfully call the, the, ta uh, the upload task endpoint in the service, which at that point, um, should mean that it did successfully call the API and create the placeholder video. So if I go to content here, oh, I don't see it. Maybe it's uh, a draft. Let me filter by visibility, draft. I don't see it, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, debugging ensues. <laughs> so, in the task worker, we got task key, 39. We got the task data, it's all the stuff. And then we say we finished it. So we should see in the YouTube upload API service here, some stuff happens and I am going to probably have to invalidate that token Uh, let's see, Google Developer Console. Because currently I'm logging it, and this is why you shouldn't log. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't log sensitive stuff. Nah, 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 secrets? What's a secret? How do I, how do I, how do I actually use this? Oh, this is <laughs> this is public now. Nobody uploads to my channel, please. What's wild here is that how do you click into a project? Because you can't click this. Uh, you can. You have to type in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to type. Okay, I hate it. Uh, let's see, APIs and services, is it in here? Do we have credentials? Uh, let's see, yep. Now, unlike me, this shouldn't show any secrets. <laughs> is, there, is there a way for me to invalidate? Uh, let's see, yeah, enabled, uh-huh. Oh yeah, client secret. Yeah, great. <laughs> is it is it a secret? Naughty naughty. Hold on. Delete. Yeah, and it's gone. <laughs> no, the uh, the OAuth two client ID doesn't exist anymore. So if you tried to do that, it would not work. In fact, let's let's test something really quick. Uh, how to prevent logging and well thank you modprog for the link uh oh by implementing display for password yeah yeah that should that should cover a lot of cases yeah let me um Move that over to a tab where I'm working. Yeah, I don't even see that anymore. Thanks for that. I'll put that right here. <laughs> Set quest unlocked. Uh, new item. Prevent logging of secrets. I did a lot of. Uh, you know, 
I did some good stuff around specifically, like not even passing secrets and environment variables, but actually passing, like using a file and then having an environment variable name the file and reading it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it was logging stuff. I knew it was logging stuff. I just uh, didn't occur to me that uh, I might pull up the logging during the stream. So anyway, uh, if we go back to Thunder Client here and I do YouTube start login, so this should fail. Or rather, opening this link, which this is not a secret, right? Because it's just part of the OAuth flow. But this should fail because the client is not yeah, oh, well, client was deleted. Check out. Yeah, I'm sure you are all trustworthy. And uh, I mean, I do have it so that my VODs are only available for <laughs> subscribers. I'm sure my very few subscribers are all trustworthy as well and wouldn't do anything bad, but it's okay. I did, I just went and deleted the secret. So I'll just have to reset all that up for glowing telegram. Okay, so subscribers only upload to YouTube channel, right? <laughs> Just too lazy to care. Well, that's that's the thing. All right, so um, all of this stuff that I've been working on, I will be committing. You know, let's just, let's do the lazy thing. Speaking of lazy things, let's do the lazy thing here and um, See, let me let me make sure that everything is saved here that there we go uh let's make a commit so this is all on this issue six pull request on uh github.com slash sabin slash glowing telegram uh yeah there we go something like that i just fed the puppies now they are all running around like hell <laughs> yeah they got all that energy i'm sure it's adorable uh so all that stuff is now pushed up uh, at least I have not committed any secrets into the repository. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> it's horribly annoying, yes. Uh, okay, so where do I want to land? There we go. Finally fixed the issue with the static analysis tool. Nice. We, uh, I am going to get back to the Elixir Twitch uh, chatbot stuff at some point had to be way more specific. Yeah, it can be annoying. Um, I'm going to get back to that at some point. It's just, it felt lower priority than actually getting to the point where I can automate uploading YouTube videos. Since I said I wasn't going to do that anymore until I had to automate it. Uh, and I, yeah, anyway, uh, so it is, it's time for lunch is what it is. It's time for lunch and I, I, I want some lunch and I'm going to end the stream. Uh, defu, uh, percent bar val, uh-huh, when, right, stuff. Yeah, so a definition of the foo method specifically guarded for when val is nil. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks so much for coming out today, everyone. Uh, we should go raid someone.